up everyone? My name is Marie, welcome to my channel and welcome to another speed build. So for today's video, I am building a little family house in Brindleton Bay, as you can see, um, you can probably tell. I'm building it on the dock in Brindleton Bay, so in the harbor area. And this is definitely my favorite area in Brindleton Bay because it's just so unique and so pretty and I love the view over the ocean and on the other side like the view over the little town and I just think it's such a cute lot I love it I think by default there is um, a cafe like a dog cafe or something or a cat cafe I should say actually not an actual cat cafe but I think it has like the cat friendly lot trade or something so basically it's a cafe where a lot of cats like hang out all the time um but i decided to use this lot for a house i've done that before quite some time ago i actually built like a tiny house or something on this lot i think but i don't know i'm just always so drawn to this lot because i love the whole industrial vibe of it and i don't know i just like it a lot so for today's video for today's build I actually decided to build a um, converted warehouse. So I was kind of imagining that there used to be like this old warehouse on this lot and it, it's renovated into a little family home. So part of the actual warehouse is still here, but then there is a few like new extensions to the house to make it a little bit bigger and to just change up the floor plan a little bit. I was imagining that parts of the warehouse had to be like taken down because it was really old and not usable anymore and just kind of dangerous as well. So I was thinking that part of the warehouse was probably bulldozed, but then, um, um, the main building or like the main structure of the warehouse is still here and they like added on to that so they added on modern extensions to that little or to the remains of the warehouse really and yeah kind of just turned it into a family home and I really love this concept I've built a renovated warehouse before um, but that one was in San Myshuno, so I really like that one as well. I'll, I'll try to remember and link that video somewhere here in this video. It's an older one though, but I still really like it. It kind of has a similar vibe to it, except the shape is a little different and stuff, but it's also like a renovated warehouse. So if you're into that kind of build, then you should check out that one as well. Um, but yeah, this one is here in Brindleton Bay and I really like the way that this came out because I did not have any reference pictures or anything for this. I just knew that I wanted to build some sort of renovated or converted warehouse. So I sat down and just started playing around with boxes and and just with the shape and size of it. And this is what I came up with and I like it a lot. I really like that little balcony area, that little deck right there that kind of like connects the two separate areas of the house, if that makes any sense. Um, even though there is no, like, there's only a second story on the bigger part of the house, as you can see, but still it kind of feels like connected because of that whole little balcony thing that I have going on. I don't know, I'm really bad at explaining it, <laughs> but I just like the overall look of it. I think it's really cozy. It's not that big either. Um, this house has two bedrooms and two full bathrooms one downstairs and one upstairs. Um, so no ensuite or anything luxurious like that. It's just a pretty simple family home. It's nothing too large or luxurious. Though the inside is pretty modern um, and pretty new. So you, it's kind of luxurious in that way, but it's not overly expensive. I think it comes in at like 70,000 simoleons, a little bit over, which I mean, if you're not playing with money cheats, it's pretty expensive, I think, <laughs> but still, it's not like overly expensive. Like I could easily build a family home that's over 100K or over 200K even. So 70,000 is really not that crazy uh, in my opinion. And I kind of built this house in different stages, if that makes any sense. Like it's kind of like scattered over a few weeks because I started building this house before, way before the update with the platforms even came out. And then I knew that we were getting that update with the platforms. So, so I was like, I should just 
stop building this for a little while and come back to it in a week or so when we have the actual platforms because I really wanted to use some platforms in this house. You can see that I did not go crazy with it at all. Um, the only platforms I used is for the sunken living room area and the raised dining area and they're both only one step up and one step down so it's really not that crazy but at this time when i was using the platforms it was brand new it was literally the first time that i was using them and then i yeah i just resumed building the house a little bit more worked on the build a little bit more and then i did not really want to do any furnishing because I knew that the new pack was coming and I wanted to wait for that. I wanted to use some of the new items as well. So I started furnishing it. I think I started like furnishing the kitchen and the dining area. And then when it came to the living room, I was like, you know what? I should just stop here for right now. Wait till we get the new pack and then come back to it. So then we got the new pack and of course I started building in Mount Kamarebi first because everything is new and shiny and the world is brand new and I wanted to try that and just see what that was all about. Um, but now since I've done already a couple of builds in Mount Kamarebi, I figured it was time to actually finish this house. Um, so I did. So I did use a couple of the new items in this house as well. And I really like the way that the whole vibe of this house came out to be. It's pretty industrial. So you can see that for a large portion of the house I used like concrete flooring and then the raised living or the sunken living area and the raised dining area I used hardwood floors so it kind of like balances out the cold concrete um, with the warmer wood tones and things like that and I just really like the way that this house came together and if you've watched more of my videos, like more of my bills, you'll probably kind of recognize this style of furniture, this style of house. It's definitely one of my favorite styles. Like a few months ago, I did a, um, I built my actual dream house here on my channel, which was also in Brindleton Bay. And you can see that the whole color scheme and overall vibe of this house is pretty similar to my actual dream house. I don't know, I just love the industrial accents in this house, like the industrial windows, the industrial kitchen, the concrete flooring, but balanced with like warm wood tones and just cozy, I don't know, just cozy clutter furniture, just cozy vibes throughout the house, but also these like industrial vibes, <laughs> if I'm making any sense. It's just something that I really, really love. Like it's a combination of styles that I really enjoy and always think is really pretty. So that's why I was definitely, definitely really enjoying, um, enjoying furnishing this house and just building this house overall. Um, and I actually built this house for a family that I am playing in my free time from time to time. It is a legacy that I'm trying to play. Um, I'm actually on the second generation right now, so that is not that crazy, but still, I usually get bored of gameplay quite fast. So I'll play like a generation and a half. Oops, that was my laptop, not yours. Um, <laughs> no worries. I'm sorry, I should have muted that. Um, anyway, I'm on the second generation of a, um, of a family right now that I built this for. And I started playing that family as the, um, the big sister challenge, quote unquote, though, like not the actual big sister challenge because I did not play according to the official rules. I kind of created my own rules for that. But I basically started with a um, big sister and a little brother. Um, and the little brother was a toddler at the time and I raised him and stuff and then I started kind of living with him. I started, um, he, well, he did not really, well, I guess he did start a family. Sadly, he never found the love of his life though. So he has been single his whole life. He's had a couple boyfriends in his time and also a, girlf a girlfriend when he was in college. Um, but then he never really found the love of his life. So when he was, when he turned into an actual adult, cause I did go to college with him, like university, and I did not 
um, turn off aging. So he did actually get older in college, which means if you have university, you'll know that time goes by really fast because you're in university for like three weeks if you take a lot of courses at the same time, that is. So my son was at university for three weeks, which means he was already almost an adult by the time he graduated college, um, mainly because I kind of forgot turning off aging, um, but it's okay. I liked that it was going kind of fast because I wanted a new generation as well. So at some point when he when he turned into an adult, um, he decided that he wanted to adopt a child. So he adopted his daughter and the daughter is a young adult right now. And the dad, um, he actually passed away, sadly. Um, Cause he was old, he was an elder, he lived a really good life. Um, he had a really good job that he enjoyed a lot and he had a loving family. He loved his daughter, obviously. Um, and he sp always spent a lot of time with his sister. He was really close to his sister and his brother-in-law and their little, um, their son. So his cousin or his nephew, I should say as well. So he has a really, he had a really, really loving family and stuff. Um, but now he sadly passed away and his older sister obviously passed away way before him. Um, but now I am playing with his daughter and she turned into a young adult. He, her dad passed away when she was only a teenager, which was really sad, but she aged up into a young adult like a couple days later. So it was all right, I guess. Um, and he, the dad, he left her a pretty good sum of money because he did go to college, like I mentioned. He did have a really good job. Like he was level 10 in his career for a long, long time. So he made a lot of money every single day. Um, so he left her a pretty good sum of money. So what she decided to do is she decided to sell the house in Brindleton Bay that they had. And for now, I moved her to Mount Kamarebi. She does have a boyfriend. They have been together for a pretty long time. And he recently moved in with her. He was her um, high school boyfriend. And Though they started dating a little bit later in high school, so when they were a little bit older already, but they're still together. And he moved in with her a few days ago and they're living in Mount Kamarebi for now, mainly for myself because I wanted to play around with a new pack with that family. So that's what I did. But for the storyline purposes, I was thinking that she lost her dad, she lost her aunt, she lost a lot of people in her life already. Um, she does have her cousin, obviously, still. She's really close with him. Um, but she decided that she wanted a fresh start. So she sold the house and she moved to a little house in Mount Kamarebi because she really wanted a change of environment. She wanted to live somewhere completely different to kind of just start over and start fresh and see the world, explore the world a little bit better. Um, and she's really into skiing, so I wanted her to um, to explore that as well. And she's doing a lot of hiking. Um, she has a dog. The dog is already a little bit old as well because the dog was already around when the dad was still alive. Um, so that is something, the dog is really near and dear to her heart, obviously because the dog is part of the family, but also because the dog kind of reminds her of the life that she used to have and how happy she was with, with just living with her dad and the dog, um, which is really cute in my opinion. So obviously the dog is still with her, of course, and they're living in Mount Kamarebi right now, just the three of them. Um, and they're doing a lot of hiking and stuff like that. But I was thinking that at some point she would want to start or they would want to start their own little family. And at some point they probably want to move back to Brindleton Bay because that is where both of them grew up. And that is also where the boyfriend's mother and sister live as well. And they're pretty close. So I'm thinking that they want to move back to Brindleton Bay at some point to be closer to their family again and just to settle down a little bit more because right now they're still young. They want to explore the world a little bit more. Maybe I'll even like move them to San Myshuno at some point, live in an apartment for a little while just to see different parts of the world and to, I don't know, experience different things. I think they're both pretty adventurous like that. But like I said, at some point they want to kind of settle down and move into 
a larger house where they can have their family, their own little family. And even though it only has two bedrooms, you could easily turn the kids' bedroom that I turned into a nursery for this build. Um, you could easily turn that into a shared kids' bedroom. It's going to be pretty small, but it would work perfectly fine. So you can have up to two children living in this house. And But I was kind of thinking that they would probably only want to have one kid. I don't know, but I kind of like the idea of playing this legacy kind of thing that I'm doing with only like having one child at, at a time and then that is going to be the child that is um, going to be the next one in line, like the next in the legacy, if that makes any sense. I'm really bad at explaining these these kinds of things. I'm sorry, but I hope it makes sense. Um, so I really like the idea of them just having one child and then that is going to be the next in line. Um, so that's what I'm kind of planning on doing. So. I figured that this house, a family home with only two bedrooms, would be perfect. And they're probably always going to have a dog because um, the main character, the, the girl that I'm playing, she is really into dogs. So because she grew up with dogs and it's just she loves them. And so she's probably always going to have one, just like I myself, I can't live without cats because that's what I have known all my life. We've always had cats growing up. It's just, I don't know any different. So I need to have cats in my life <laughs> um, to be able to feel complete or fulfilled. I don't know, it sounds really extra and really dumb probably, but I love cats. Like I have to have a cat in my life. So that's the same way for this sim. Like she needs to have a dog in her life always. So that's why I always, but that's why I also place down like a pet bowl and stuff downstairs. Um, so yeah, you could easily have a pet in this house as well. Um, sadly, the dog that she has right now, he is soon going to be turning into an elderly dog and then he's not going to be around a lot longer. Um, which is sad, but that's just how it is. Like you have to say goodbye to your pet, to your pets at some point in your life. That is just how it works, sadly. Um, but yeah, she'll have another dog later in life. Like she'll always have one. But this is the, the little nursery that I was talking about. I figured I would just turn it into a nursery. You could use it as a nursery, but you could obviously also turn it into like a toddler's bedroom really easily or a kid's bedroom. But I figured if I was going to use, or if I was going to make this house move in ready for my family that I'm playing, then I would want to turn it into a nursery. So that's what I did, even though they're not going to be living here for a while. Like I'm still having a lot of fun with them in um, in Mount Kamarebi, and I actually turned aging off for now. That's usually what I do when I play my game like this. I'll turn aging on and off, like from time to time, like sometimes I'm like, okay, I want it, I want my Sims to be at, at this specific stage in their life for a little bit longer. So then I'll just turn off aging for them and for the rest of the world as well. And then when I'm like ready to move on, I will turn aging back on. And that's just kind of how I go back and forth always. I like it like that. Like I like having the control over it like that. Otherwise it can just sometimes feel a little bit rushed or it can feel like I have to rush things and I don't like that feeling. <laughs> so I just like to play around with aging like that from time to time. Um, but yeah, it's really not that interesting, but yeah, that's just how I like to play the game. Um, but you can see that I am using a fair amount of items from the new pack in this build as well. I really, really love well, everything, all the furniture items, I love all of them, but there are a couple of decorative or decorations that I really like. For, us, for example, the plants that, were, that we got with this pack, they're all so adorable and I can't stop using them. Also the, the artwork, like I always want new artwork in my game, but I'm especially so happy with the ones that we got with Snowy Escape because they're so pretty. Look at those plants that I'm placing down right now here on the balcony. They're so ridiculously beautiful. And also the other ones, the little bonsai tree and the other tiny little decorative plants. I think that they're so beautiful. And also the little um, rug. It's really small, so I size it up most of the time, especially for living rooms and bedrooms. When I use it in bathrooms, I'll just use the very, very small version of it. Um, 
but I really like it. I love fluffy rugs, so I don't know. I'm always happy when we get a new one and we don't have that many of them in the game. That's why I overuse that, the ones that we have. Like I use them all the time. So I'm so happy that we got an extra fluffy rug with this pack. I think it's really cute. Um, but yeah. Here you can see that we moved on to the quote unquote backyard. It's not really a backyard because it's on the dock. So I don't know, I figured there wouldn't be any grass or anything here. So I just placed a couple of pot plants and a few picnic tables and a barbecue. And um, yeah, then that is almost already going to be it for this build. I just placed on a couple of plants here on the front porch as well. There's a lot of potted plants everywhere. I love that look, especially in industrial areas like this. I just really like the whole vibe of it. Um, but yeah, anyway, that is pretty much already going to be it for this build. So you can definitely go ahead and download this build off the gallery if you want to. It's play tested and everything, so it should work just fine. My username on the gallery is Simmery Sims. You can also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram if you'd like. My username on there is Simmery Sims as well. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next build. Bye.